Yeah, you know why the confidence is shattered, Steve? The confidence is shattered because people like the Honorable Mr. Cox and the whole line have changed rules in the middle of the game. That's what has busted the confidence. You know, I absolutely am amazed at times when I see the amount of manipulation that takes place in this marketplace. Um, how many interventions are we going to have until we realise that you cannot stop the inevitable? The reality is, and I thought Rick Santelli said it best when he talked about the Sears Towers. Some of the people think, you know, if you have a Sears Tower that's riddled with termites and your goal is to build a beautiful new shiny one on top of it, maybe that's doomed to fail. Now to me, that makes total sense. You cannot build a load of new floors upon a building which is riddled with termites. It's all going to fall. It has no choice but to fall. You have the scenario where the Bank of Ireland this week in Europe actually decided to back all deposits. Now, how can it do that? It doesn't even have the GDP turnover to be able to do, do that. 400 billion is the deposits in Ireland and the GDP in Ireland is nowhere near that per year. In fact, I'll put a link up to all of the GDPs around the world from Wikipedia on, on the right hand side here of this uh, video. You also had Dexia and Fortis being bought out uh, by, not bought out, but backed by the governments of um, uh, the uh, Netherlands, Brussels and uh, France. Um, you've had the Bradford and Bingley go into nationalisation in the United Kingdom. You've had um, the Savers Protection also being increased to 50,000 in the UK. You've had the European Union in turmoil after what Ireland did when it said it would guarantee all the deposits that are out there. You've got the FDIC talking about raising to 250 um, the limit in the United States when there's only 52 billion in their fund anyway to pay out to depositors. No one asks the real questions. There's not a media person out there that's really asking the real questions and that is what is the future? A nation in fear of a financial meltdown last night got ready to watch their president set out his ambitious plan for a rescue. Good evening. This is an extraordinary period for America's economy. It was the first time George Bush addressed the crisis on primetime TV and the first time he spelled out precisely what's at stake. Mm -hmm. More banks could fail, including some in your community. The stock market would drop even more, which would reduce the value of your retirement account. The value of your home could plummet. Foreclosures would rise dramatically. And he said millions of Americans could lose their jobs. The entire economy, he said, would be a, that no financial institution is safe from collapse. So what it means for us, well, our loans and our, our mortgages will get more expensive. We'll have less money in our pockets. That means less money, of course, to spend on the high street. That'll hit retailers. We could see more businesses collapse. That would mean more people out of work. And unfortunately, that could also mean of course, um, a more home repossession. So many saying that when you can't get money out of your ATM anymore, then it'll affect you, and we're getting close to that point. Meanwhile, the few most senior clerics in the Church of England have condemned the behavior of city traders. The Archbishop of York, John Sentamy, said people who made money by betting on falls in the share price of the struggling bank HBOS had acted like bank robbers and asset strippers. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr. Rowan Williams, also criticizes the way traders profited from buying and selling debt. You know, you really cannot keep this system going. There has to be a new system put in place. We have to let this current one fall. Yes, that's hardships for a lot of people, probably including the viewers that are watching this and myself as well. And we're just going to have to get used to that. That's just the way it's going to be. Um, I mean, you have a look here. It says here, Senate comes to the rescue. Well, every time a government has ever intervened in the marketplaces, it never comes to the rescue. It comes in as a firefighter, puts out a small bit of the fire. People think it's all over, and then things always get worse. People, what are you going to do? We've got a lot of these problems were caused by government regulation. One of your uh, guests earlier on said the one thing you're not going to see now is a market bottom because you're not going to have a short-selling rally because <laughs> there's no short-selling. 
Well, those are the kinds of mistakes government made with unintended consequences. They write pieces saying how much money we're going to make when nobody even knows what the pricing mechanism is going to be. Viewers, be careful out there of snake oil salesmen on every side trying to present this plan. We don't know enough details. One thing we do know, the history of the government making money for us isn't a great one. Back to you. Isn't it time just for a whole new thinking? I mean, we're talking still about trying to prop up a system which patently doesn't work, using tools that we've been using for all this time, which have caused this problem in the first place, in order to get back to a situation which is similar, we hope, to what's happened previously. Surely we're just setting ourselves up for failure, and even trying to value these stocks on the basis of what's happened before, what's gone before, must be fundamentally flawed, because we're still back to where we were in the first place. Like, surely it's time to just wipe the whole thing clean, whatever the bailout plan looks like, and just absolutely start afresh, rather than trying to benchmark everything against what's been in the past few years. Um, you know, one of the things that I try to do with these videos, and I hope they, they do, is they just concentrate your mind back to being a human being. That's what you are first and foremost. You may come from a grander existence. Spiritual beliefs, everyone has their own. I have my own, and um, their mixture of tradition that I've grown up with and the knowledge that I have from being part of a, an interfaith type community. And I'm very fortunate to be part of a um, uh, groups that, that have multiple faiths talk about their beliefs without trying to convert one another and also uh, I have a, a website which is dedicated to faith um, and, uh, and how we can all understand one another rather than making judgments. Now truth is a very subjective word and obviously I, I hope that um, the information I put out on here um, uh, is truth, it's certainly truth as I see it um, and I want you just to be aware that you need to stand up for things. You know, you need to understand you are a human being first and foremost, that there's a need for us to um, work together, get to know one another and work for a better society. And as the financial um, society collapses, whether that's over the next couple of months or a couple of years or decade, we need to be there on the sidelines to pick people up and to move forward and come up with a new consciousness. You know, history shows that over periods of time that um, new... Uh, new new era start and we're in that new era i really feel it i feel it on a spiritual basis i feel it on a financial basis um i, I feel it on a political basis politically if you don't agree with things i need you to stand up the world needs you to stand up and you need to take a stand uh, I very much am like Jesse Ventura in the idea that I don't believe in party politics. I don't think that you will have one choice whether it's Labour or, um, or Democrats or whether it's Republicans or Conservatives. And that's your choice. That's not a choice. That's not freedom. That is absolute, that's almost the same as dictatorship. It's one more person you get to choose. Uh, and the person you vote in for your constituency, for your Senate, um, you know, they actually tow the party line. That's not them working for you and for the best for your community. That's them working for a paycheck. What are um, you going to do um, to change the consciousness of people out there so that people aren't afraid? There's too much fear in the world. Well, the reality is the sun will rise and food will grow and you don't necessarily need um, the current credit system to barter and trade. Um, we have been lied to for far too long. I mean, when you talk about the fact that they're all looking for credit, in itself, it's, it's a crazy system. When your company, who you're employed by, has to go out and raise commercial paper um, to pay the payroll, there's something going wrong somewhere. Um, and the fact that they've been doing it now for so many decades, um, people just say, well, that's the way it's got to be. Well, no, it doesn't. The way it's got to be is there's got to be a change and people have to start thinking for the good of the human race. Now, I have some ideas on that and I'll share that with you um, over the coming weeks. Just want you to be aware, you know, whatever rallies you see in these marketplaces, they're not going to actually be sustainable. If you look back in 1929 and you look back at all of the other crashes, there's always been these technical and dead cat bounces. Don't be suckered into it. You know, the last time that the US went into depression, um, as everybody says, 1929, what people forget to say is they didn't come out of it until 1944. And it was World War II that pulled the United States out of recession. And house prices didn't recover for almost 30 years. So, what are you going to do to prepare? You have to be out of debt. You have to have the ability to grow your own food. You have to have knowledge to be able to survive what's going to happen over the coming years. And you have to start turning people's opinion from a credit society to a new conscience where we actually all work together and we understand that there can be a different way. Take care.